was gusty again, and we are now permanently allocated a section of lake that is brilliant for the noisy floating lawnmowers, but tricky for the lone yachty, and that's me. We're standing to windward of the lake on a bank, so the winds closest to us are nasty in a breeze, and in an ideal world I'd be sailing off the opposite bank. Consequently, the video is on a big zoom, making it jerky. Something we'll need to improve on for future weekends, but hopefully this is forgiven for now. At least we're capturing the action. It's also not helped by having a fountain in exactly the wrong spot. Well, Sunday was a good day. Not just because it was a Sunday, but because I've now landed on the right foil configuration for this boat. It was also a good day because I achieved a personal best of 28 kph of the boat, an increase of 4 kph over the previous average top speeds. I was also experimenting with a smaller T-foil on the rudder, and it took a while to sort out the right angle of attack for the foil. It is 4cm narrower than the standard, and the boat was initially more twitchy, requiring a change in the angle of attack of the foil. So it's a trade-off between more area and less angle of attack, or vice versa. Just like rear spoilers on a racing car. The initial bow down attitude was not intentional and gave me some nervous moments until I made the right adjustments. Sailing in strong gusty winds, the boat is either hopelessly underpowered in the lulls or on a knife edge when at speed. The sails really do need constant trimming and I'm only now just beginning to learn how to keep the boat on the foils through the gusts by easing the sails just a fraction. I should have tried more twists in the mainsail but got a bit carried away enjoying the sailing and I was not disciplined enough to make more experiments. The boat is definitely flying too high when at speed. It's astonishing how little foil area is needed to keep the boat flying once it's out of the water. I'll keep this foil set of foils as my benchmark from now on, but we'll experiment with a new set with more taper at the tip of the foils. So the maximum speed today was 28 kph, or 17.4 miles per hour, or 15.1 knots, take your pick. And I recorded this a few times so it wasn't a fluke. This is a noticeable increase on previous outings and I think I've hit a speed barrier with the boat now. The only way I can improve on this will be with less resistance from the foils and rudder. 30 kph is achievable, but not with the setup that I have today. And we're approaching speeds now where the wind resistance on the hulls is probably becoming a factor. And perhaps, horror of horrors, I need to start thinking about a solid wing mast, something I'm dreading. I have enough trouble making foils and conventional rigs, I really don't want to have to start making wings as well. I've trawled the internet looking at large wings on radio controlled gliders, but I can't find anything that would help me. So I'll just keep practicing how to make pocket luff mainsails for now. The video shows some really good long foiling runs and I think without doubt this was the best afternoon sail that I've had with the boat, only cut short by the transmitter battery going low. A bit worrying since it's only 5 months old so I'd better get a couple of spares. So the plan moving forward is to learn how to sail the blinking boat in gusty winds and try some slimmer foils of the same concept and work out if we can reduce the rudder size without weakening it. The current rudder is 30 centimetres long to keep the T-foil in the water and I only need the top half of this for steering. So I need to have a think about rudder construction as well. I'll add it to the things to make after Easter. I need to make it clear that the boat is not foiling to windward. I don't think this is possible as it is set up right now. 
I will never be able to perform a foiling tack unless, just perhaps, I add a lot of weight to the boat to give it more momentum, but I cannot see this as a long-term progressive step for the boat. All the runs you see are beam reaches, but once I get up speed I am trying to sail closer to the wind to see just how high I can point before it falls off the foils. With such a small rig it's not easy to sail upwind with the foils, and it's definitely not a setup I would want to have if I was racing around a conventional course against conventional melter hulls. It's horses for courses, and I'm enjoying my foiling. In fact, if you added another two of these boats to this lake, the lake would suddenly become pretty small.